This lesson deals with the law of cosines, and this is going to be the derivation of the law of cosines. So if we begin with a, tri a triangle labeled as we normally do, uh, we have angles A, B, and C, and we have sides A, B, and C that are across from the angles of the same letter. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop a perpendicular height from point B to the base. And I'm going to label the length of, or I'm going to determine the length of that side. So, so it's, it's a height because it's perpendicular to the base. So if I look at angle C, then I can see that the sine of angle C is equal to H over A. The sine of angle C is equal to H divided by sine A. Trigonometry. That means that H is equal to A times the sine of C. So I can now change that from H to A times the sine of angle C. If I do the same thing for this red segment of side B. Again, that's in the right triangle, therefore, I can now say that that red segment is, well, the cosine of C is equal to the red divided by side A. So that means that the red is A times the cosine of angle C. Now, if I asked you to determine the length from that intersection of the perpendicular along the base here to vertex A, and I gave you the restriction that you were only allowed to use what was already calculated on the triangle, I hope you come up with the blue segment is side B minus A times the cosine of C. Since the red is A times the cosine of C, and the full length of the bottom is B, then the blue segment is B minus that red length. Now, we can use the triangle on the the right hand side. So I want to focus on I want to focus on the triangle here. And I want to write the Pythagorean theorem for the three sides of that right triangle. So I'm going to write c squared, that's the hypotenuse squared, is equal to the sum of the square of the legs. So a times the sine of c squared plus the quantity b minus a times the cosine of c all squared. And if I simplify, here we have a product, a times the sine of c, so that means I individually square the components, or the factors. So a squared sine squared, and in the second term I have a binomial squared, which we know is the first term squared, and then we multiply together the two terms and double it, so it's minus 2ab cosine c. And then finally we square the second term, so that's a squared cosine squared of c. I can now group the two terms that have a squared in it. And I can factor it a squared out. So I get a squared times the quantity sine squared of c plus cosine squared of c. And then I'm going to leave the other two terms alone here. 
And from our trigonometric identities, we should remember that sine squared of c plus cosine of c, cosine squared of c is equal to 1. So that leaves us with c squared equals a squared times 1 plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of c. This result is called the bar of cosines. And it turns out it looks very similar to Pythagorean theorem if you look at the if you look at the uh, you look at it in terms of the components. So I have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So here we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So like that, it looks like the Pythagorean theorem, but we have this extra term as well, minus 2ab cosine c. So if I then look at just that last term, if angle c is 90 degrees, <clears throat> Therefore, it's a right triangle. Cosine of 90 is 0, so this whole term goes away. So in, in reality, the law of cosines is a special form. I'm sorry, the Pythagorean theorem is a special form of the law of cosines. That concludes the video on the derivation. Uh, the next set of videos will be doing examples of problems using the law of cosines.